citizen filmed the Boston, Massachusetts police officers making an arrest. When they noticed him recording them, they arrested him. In the unanimous decision, the United States Court of Appeals in the First Circuit held that the officers violated Mr. Glick's constitutional rights, and the officers were not entitled to qualified immunity. The court ruled the right to film public servants in public places was clearly established. Boston reached a settlement with Flick in which they agreed to pay him $170,000 plus attorney's fees. This was the first case the United States Circuit Court of Appeals explicitly ruled that a private citizen have a right to film police officers in public places. The case through media attention across the United States was also cited favorably by other United States Circuit Courts of Appeals that reached similar conclusions in other cases. New Hampshire's wiretapping statute does not have an exception for recording public servants. 1546 amends the statute by an, an explicit exemption. HB 1546 also adds exemption wording to several other statutes, specifically the disorderly conduct statute and the obstruction of government administration statute. It's RSA 642 and RSA 644 colon 2. They're poorly worded statutes which basically offenses subjective in nature, and is frequently used as a catch-all to effect an arrest. By adding the recording exemption language to these statutes, we make it clear that recording is not an offense. New Hampshire has a problem with public servants not adhering to the decision in Blake. As you will hear in other testimony, police officers are currently arresting individuals for recording them. This results in expensive litigation and settlements, the cost of which is ultimately borne by the taxpayers. The actual actors do not suffer any penalty. HB 1546 addresses this problem. In addition to explicit exemptions from criminal statute for recording, this bill has a criminal penalty to those who violate the right to record. If a person interferes with a person recording a public servant in violation of the person's right to record, they would be subject to criminal sanctions. This would be in effect deterrent to the continued practice of arresting or interfering with citizens for recording. <coughs> and in addition to the criminal sanctions, HB 1546 establishes a cause of action for injunctive relief under 91-A, which is New Hampshire's open accountable government statute. The injunctive relief would be available in addition to any criminal penalty imposed. In the event that criminal sanctions are not available, any person agreed by having their right to record violated could pursue civil criminal remedy in superior court under 91-A. HB 1546 also removes the criminal penalty for recording the conversation to which someone is a party to. Currently under the wiretapping statute, someone can be prosecuted for recording the conversation they participate in. There is no reasonable expectation of privacy among the parties to a conversation. Parties to a conversation know they're communicating with the other parties, and it's entirely reasonable for any party to a conversation to have an objective record of the interaction. I ask that you vote OTP on HB 1546, and I thank you for your time and attention. Questions? Representative Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your testimony. I have a question. It's probably purely technical in nature, but uh, 
going with the definition of a public service by performing a public function, a government function, uh, wouldn't it be true that uh, once a police officer or uh, any city or town employee clocks in for the day, they're performing a government function as long as they're off on the clock? Yes. Follow up? Follow up? So if <coughs> someone wanted to film a police officer on his lunch break, if he's not signed out, would that technically be allowed? I guess if it's not a secure area, it wouldn't be allowed. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking the question. Would it also include public school teachers or public servants, uh, city hall workers, and non-law enforcement? Well, the Glick decision also includes that the right of recording is subject to reasonable regulations. So I would think that you could exclude certain areas from public view. My concern would be public schools, especially in the elementary and middle schools, often the teacher could come out of the classroom to watch the parents and watch the students in the class, and if the parent is walking by, and oh, I know that you did something to my child, I'm going to report that he or she was outside the classroom. So, wouldn't this open up opportunities for misuse of public servant being on camera? I don't believe it would because public schools are already restricted access, <coughs> not public places per se. In other words, a general, general public just can't walk into a school, they have to be granted access to the school. That's, All up. that's not true. In a public school, you can, even if you don't have a child, if you are a citizen, you could be in the school building with, for some other, you know, I don't have a child in uh, my elementary school, but I go in to read to the uh, kids or volunteer. So there are others that go in will have access to it. So that's, um, that would be my opinion. Cuomo. I believe the FERPA law covers school and school children for their privacy, correct? I have a question and it's just going to be very simple. On page one, line four, the change basically makes, uh, eliminates the two-party requirement in the state of New Hampshire and then turns it into a single party because the way it's worded, it says at least one party to the communication. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, uh, Representative. Uh, do you know how many states have one party consent? I don't know exactly, but I originally hail from New Jersey, where virtually everything is legal. <laughs> and they, and they allow one party comes to the party. And then one follow up. Follow up. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have a position paper, which you haven't seen, of course, um, from the state police, and they oppose the bill. Uh, would you have any speculation of why? Just to hear it from you. I don't. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cordell Johnson.